Hello. My name is Vienna Morrill, and this is a presentation on motivational interviewing and the trans theoretical model of change. Both of these are really important topics for professionals who routinely work with patients who are undergoing uh, behavioral change. So here we have an overview of today's presentation. I'll start by discussing why these two topics are so important. Then we'll talk a little bit about the spirit of motivational interviewing, what it entails, um, and then change talk, which is really a central element of motivational interviewing. Then I'll introduce you to the trans theoretical model of change, or the TTM, and then we'll talk about how the MI approach and the TTM fit together. Central to the concept of behavioral change is the recognition that really no two patients are exactly alike. Having a theory, such as the TTM, and a style, such as MI, allow you to adapt to each individual's readiness to change and uh, unique intrinsic motivations, provides a counselor with the ability to tailor a client-centered approach that is more likely to result in desirable outcomes. So what is motivational interviewing? MI is an approach that helps the counselor work with both patient motivation and resistance. Through MI, the goal is to facilitate the process by which the patient uncovers his or her intrinsic motivation. The approach builds upon theories by Carl Rogers and Abraham Maslow, which state that everyone has an internal desire to be their version of uh, their best self. In other words, to reach the point of self-actualization. In the MI, external authorities on what and how a person should be are relinquished, and the counseling work focuses on helping the patient pursue goals that are internally meaningful. Motivational interviewing is built upon five general principles. The first principle is to express empathy through reflective listening. To have empathy is really to truly understand another person's unique perspective and uh, circumstances without judging, criticizing, or blaming. Empathy is best expressed through reflective listening, which entails repeating the emotion back to the patient. So in response to a patient who is finding it difficult to find time to exercise, you could say, just simply say, it sounds like you are having a difficult time finding time for exercise. Uh, next, developing a discrepancy between the client's goals and their current behaviors. This is where change talk starts to come into play, um, and the counselor can help the patient resolve ambivalence about changing. We'll discuss change talk specifically in the next slide. Next, you want to avoid argument and direct confrontation. The focus should be on acknowledging challenges and uncovering opportunities. Similarly, adjusting to client resistance rather than opposing it directly. As a counselor, you want to roll with resistance instead of challenging resistance. There are a number of techniques for doing this, including reflecting, reframing, or shifting focus. Uh, finally, we're able to, um, ultimately, we're seeking to promote self-efficacy and optimism. In other words, we want the patient to feel really good about the prospect of implementing change. So let's talk uh, a little more about change talk. A big focus of MI is a listening change talk. There are some specific techniques for initializing change talk. For example, you could ask the patient to rank the importance of a change and separately their ability to change. So if we take the example of exercise, the patient may believe the importance of exercise is a seven, but their cap capability for implementing an exercise routine is a three. The counselor can then ask the patient um, why they rank their ability so low. As the patient begins to reveal their barriers, the counselor will start to identify different types of change talk. For example, uh, maybe this current behavior isn't so good for me. They're recognizing the problem. I could probably make some changes, um, showing optimism and self-efficacy. I'm worried that my current behavior will have consequences, expressing concern. I think I'll try something new tomorrow, showing intention to change. As change talk emerges, the counselor can use these listening techniques on the left, like asking more open-ended questions and listening reflectively. Um, affirmations, these are statements that validate um, either patient's difficulties or successes. 
For example, the patient talks about how it's really difficult to be a mom and have a full-time job. The counselor may say, it sounds like you have a lot of responsibilities and are committed to being a great employee and a great mom. This helps build confidence for the patient and can make them feel empowered to take on new challenges associated with their desired behavior change. Finally, there's going to be times when the patient will benefit from some information. This is where the uh, elicit, provide elicit technique comes into play. Here the counselor asks permission to provide information. So they may first start by asking the patient what she knows about the amount and type of exercise she should be getting, and allowing the patient to respond, and then acknowledging the patient's response while providing some additional information. Once the information is provided, the counselor can ask the patient for her perspective on what was discussed. Finally, summarizing simply refers to reflecting back um, a summary of the counseling session and essentially providing the patient with an opportunity to confirm what was covered or make any corrections that are needed. Next, let's talk about the trans theoretical model of change, or TTM, as we will refer to it, also known as the stages of change model. The TTM is a model of how and why change occurs. It's based on the premise that throughout change, individuals pass through different motivational stages. With each stage, self-efficacy and motivation increase. The TTM is not fully linear though, so patients may move back and forth between phases, and this can even happen within a single counseling session. The first phase is pre-contemplation. At this point, the patient has no intention of changing and is resistant to change. In the patient's mind, the cons, of changing clearly outweigh the pros. Next contemplation, the patient recognizes the need but feels ambivalent about changing. In other words, the pros and cons kind of tend to teeter in and out of balance here. The patient enters preparation uh, stage once the pros outweigh the cons. Action occurs once the behavior change has been in place for um, as little as one day, but up to six months. Maintenance really doesn't occur until you get past that six month period. As we can see from the sifting kind of seesaw or scale images, um, decisional balance is central to the TTM. So how do uh, MI and TTM fit together? It's important to understand that the two concepts are distinct. The TTM is a conceptual model of how and why change occurs. MI is a style or method for enhancing motivation and thus for helping promote movement through the TTM stages. So let's put it all together. Here I've overlaid some of the key MI concepts within the TTM model. It's important to note that motivational conflicts can occur at any stage in the change process. Even once the patient reaches the maintenance phase, which you can see might be peaks and valleys in their level of motivation and self-efficacy. And there may at times, um, they may actually dip back into earlier stages of the TTM. Really, all the strategies and concepts of that MI can and should be used dynamically throughout the change process. However, there are some concepts that fit particularly well with particular stages of the TTM. For instance, asking open-ended questions and listening reflectively early in the change process allows the counselor to understand the patient's current level of motivation and self-efficacy while also demonstrating um, those important values like empathy, sincerity, and that non-judgmental approach. As the patient moves into contemplation, strategies like rolling with the resistance and using that elicit, provide elicit, so that informing technique can help explore ambivalence and hopefully uh, tip those scales in favor of change. As the patient's self-efficacy emerges, affirmations can help cultivate further confidence and self-belief in changing. If we think back to the five principles of MI, um, it quickly becomes apparent how well MI really does complement the TTM and vice versa. So uh, that concludes my presentation on um, motivational interviewing and the trans theoretical model of change. I thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for listening. Hope you enjoyed it and have a wonderful day. Thank you.